So this is our supercritical fluid demonstration and what we can see on screen here is we have a cell and this is a sealed cell and there's a camera pointing to the front of the window. So if I shake the table we can see the liquid inside um, vibrating. So we have a liquid and we have a gas on top and what we're going to do is we're going to heat it up. So if we flick the switch on the front of the demonstration we're going to heat the cell up and because it's a closed system what we'll see on screen is they'll see the liquid start to boil and as the temperature increases the gas moves from the liquid to the vapor phase and the density of the vapor phase increases and the liquid phase decreases until we reach a certain point uh, when the two become indistinguishable from one another and this is a supercritical fluid so you'll have noticed that the dividing line between the, the liquid phase and the gas phase has now almost disappeared and we've got a homogeneous mixture. So that's now our supercritical fluid. Um, and then if we run the demonstration in reverse, so now we'll cool the cell down and we'll see the opposite thing happen. So when the temperature of the cell reaches approximately 45 degrees, we'll see this phase separation occurring and will regenerate the um, liquid phase and the vapour phase. There we go. So you can see we get this fantastic snowstorm effect where the um, gas comes out of the solution uh, and rises to the top and we get droplets of the liquid forming and these fall to the bottom. Um, and if we shake the demonstration you can see now we've reformed the meniscus so the the separation between the, the liquid and gas phases. And it takes a little bit of time for the liquid to completely um, get back to where it was at the beginning so we can still see some liquid droplets forming at the side on the demonstration. Uh, one of the reasons we're interested in supercritical fluids is that we're trying to do something called supercritical fluid electrodeposition. So this will involve um, taking nanostructures, uh, nanoporous materials, and using um, supercritical fluids to actually deposit materials at the bottom. So the reason we're using supercritical fluids is that they behave um, partly like a gas, but also like a solvent as well. So you can dissolve things in them, uh, but importantly they flow like a gas, and also they have zero surface tension. So if we have very, very tiny nanoporous materials, to be able to get material into the bottom, we need something uh, which will be able to um, travel right down to the bottom of the pore and has zero surface tension. And then we'll be able to deposit materials layer by layer and build up um, nanoscale electronic devices.